Frere, Wikipedia Audio Frere, sometimes anglicized as Frey, is a widely attested god associated with sacral kingship, virility and prosperity, with sunshine and fair weather, and pictured as a phallic fertility god in Norse mythology. Frere is said to bestow peace and pleasure on mortals. Frere, sometimes referred to as Envy Frere, was especially associated with Sweden and seen as an ancestor of the Swedish royal house. In the Icelandic books The Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, Frere is presented as one of the Vanir, the son of the sea god Njrr, as well as the twin brother of the goddess Freya. The gods gave him Alfheimr, the realm of the elves, as a teething present. He rides the shining dwarf made Borgullin Bursti and possesses the ship Skblanir which always has a favorable breeze and can be folded together and carried in a pouch when it is not being used. He has the servants Skirnir, Bigvur, and Bela. The most extensive surviving Freyr myth relates Freyr's falling in love with the female Jotun Gare. Eventually, she becomes his wife but first Freyr has to give away his magic sword which fights on its own if wise be he who wields it. Although deprived of this weapon, Freyr defeats the Jotun belly with an antler. However, lacking his sword, Freyr will be killed by the fire Jotun Surger during the events of Ragnarok. Adam of Bremen Like other Germanic deities, veneration of Freyr is revived in the modern period in Heat Henry movement. Written around 1080, one of the oldest written sources on pre-Christian Scandinavian religious practices is Adam of Bremen Escus de Hamabergensis Ecclesiae Pontificum. Adam claimed to have access to first-hand accounts on pagan practices in Sweden. He refers to Freyr with the Latinized name Fricko and mentions that an image of him at Skara was destroyed by the Christian missionary, Bishop Egino. His description of the temple at Uppsala gives some details on the god. Freyzakr, name of two old farms in Gol and Torpa, Freyshof. Name of two old farms in Hol and Trukstad, Freysland, name of six old farms in Fida, Hals, Ferd, Sondal, Sgne and Torpa, Frasel, name of two old farms in Lunar and Torpa, Freysnes, name of an old farm in Sandnes, Freysitger, name of two old farms in Masfjorden and Sondal, Freystein, name of an old farm in Lista, Freystigr, name of an old farm in Rams, Freysvik, name of two old farms in Fresvik and Ullensvang. Freysvin, name of four old farms in Hol, Lom, Sunelvin, and Strigosdal, Freysvilver, name of an old farm in Esarodal, Freysvait, name of an old farm in Hedrum. In Hoc Templo, Quat Totem Ex Oro Paratum Est, Statuus Trium Deorum Venerator Populus, Eta Ut Patentissimus E Orum Thor in Medio Solium Habit Triclinio, Hin Et in Locum Poseidon Woden Et Frico. Quorum Significations E as Modi Sunt, Thor, Inquient, Presidet in Eri, Ki Toni Trus Et Fulmina, Ventos Imbresc, Serena Et Fruges Gubernat. Alter Woden, Idest Führer, Bella Jarrett, Hominic Ministrat Virtudum Contra Inimicos. Tertius Est Frico, Pacem Volupte Temc Largiens Mortalibus. Quius Entium Simulacrum Fing Gunt Cum Ingenti Priapo. In this temple, entirely decked out in gold, the people worship the statues of three gods in such wise that the mightiest of them, Thor, occupies a throne in the middle of the chamber, Woden and Friko have places on either side. The significance of these gods is as follows, Thor, they say, presides over the air, 
which governs the thunder and lightning, the winds and rains, fair weather and crops. The other, Woden that is, the furious carries on war and imparts to man strength against his enemies. The third is Frico, who bestows peace and pleasure on mortals. His likeness, too, they fashion with an immense phallus. Later in the account Adam states that when a marriage is performed a libation is made to the image of Frico. Historians are divided on the reliability of Adam's account. While he is close in time to the events he describes he has a clear agenda to emphasize the role of the Archbishopric of Hamburg Bremen in the Christianization of Scandinavia. His time frame for the Christianization of Sweden conflicts with other sources, such as runic inscriptions and archaeological evidence does not confirm the presence of a large temple at Uppsala. On the other hand, the existence of phallic idols was confirmed in 1904 with a find at Rallinge in Soderman land. When Snorreister Lusen was writing in 13th century Iceland, the indigenous Germanic gods were still remembered although they had not been openly worshipped for more than two centuries. Froslunda, Upland, Frozaker, Upland, Frosen, Jamtland, Frosk, Smaland, Froshv, Vastergotland, Frosakol Halland. In the Jilfagining section of his prose Edda, Snorri introduces Freyr as one of the major gods. Njrri Notunum Gat San Tiva Born, Het Sun Refreyr and Dottir Freya. A U Vera Fogar Ultim OK Matug. Freyr E R Hinagatasti A F Ajam. Han R R Freyr Regni OK Skinny Solar, OK Army Avex Dijerer, OK A Han E R God at Hida Til Rs OK Friar. Han RR OK Fisa Elumana. Jilfagining 24, Ebbs Edition. FRS Herd, Southern Jutland. Prose Edda. N. Jordrin Notun begot afterward two children, the son was called Freyr, and the daughter Freya, they were fair of face and mighty. Freyr is the most renowned of the Asir. He rules over the rain and the shining of the sun, and therewith all the fruit of the earth, and it is good to call on him for fruitful seasons and peace. He governs also the prosperity of men. Jilfagining XXIV, Broda's Translation This description has similarities to the older account by Adam of Bremen but the differences are interesting. Adam assigns control of the weather and produce of the fields to Thor but Snorri says that Freyr rules over those areas. Snorri also omits any explicitly sexual references in Freyr's description. Those discrepancies can be explained in several ways. It is possible that the Norse gods did not have exactly the same roles in Icelandic and Swedish paganism but it must also be remembered that Adam and Snorri were writing with different goals in mind. Either Snorri or Adam may also have had distorted information. The only extended myth related about Freyr in the prose Edda is the story of his marriage. At var ein dag er frere hafi genjit i hlisk j elf ok sa of huma ala. N e r han light i nort, a with acute sa han a in um bo mikit hus ok fag right, ok til s hus gek kona, ok e r han talk up hondam ok lauk her ferir sir a with acute list e a f hondam henner by i load ok a log, ok alir humer bertisk a f henny. Jilfagining 37, Ebbs Edition It chanced one day that Freyr had gone to Hlidskjolf, and gazed over all the world, but when he looked over into the northern region, he saw on an estate a house great and fair. And toward this house went a woman, when she raised her hands and opened the door before her, brightness gleamed from her hands, both over sky and sea and all the worlds were illumined of her. 
Chilfajining XXXVII, Broda's translation. The woman is Gare, a beautiful giantess. Frere immediately falls in love with her and becomes depressed and taciturn. After a period of brooding, he consents to talk to Skirnir, his footpage. He tells Skirnir that he has fallen in love with a beautiful woman and thinks he will die if he cannot have her. He asks Skirnir to go and woo her for him. A with acute svarer Skirnir, Sajisva at hand Skulfara Sendifer and Freyr Skulfa Anam Sversit. At Varsva Gotsver at Shulft Vask. And Freyr let Ig at Til Skorda ok Gaf Anam Sverit. A with acute for Skirnir ok Va Anam Kananar ok Fekhidit Henner. Ok Niu Nadam Sar Skaldi Han Arkoma Er Beri High Tier Ok Gunga A with acute at Brala Pinu Mi Frey. Jilfajining 37, Ebs Edition. Jilfajining. Skaldic Poetry. Then Skirnir answered thus, he would go on his errand, but Freyr should give him his own sword which is so good that it fights of itself, and Freyr did not refuse, but gave him the sword. Then Skirnir went forth and wooed the woman for him, and received her promise, and nine nights later she was to come to the place called Bari, and then go to the bridal with Freyr. Chilfajining XXXVII Broda's translation. Franaker, Friesland. Nafnalur. Poetic Edda. Valaspa. Grimnismal. Locasena. The loss of Freyr's sword has consequences. According to the Prose Edda, Freyr had to fight Belly without his sword and slew him with an antler. But the result at Ragnarok, the end of the world, will be much more serious. Freyr is fated to fight the fire giant Surtr and since he does not have his sword he will be defeated. Even after the loss of his weapon Freyr still has two magical artifacts, both of them dwarf-made. One is the ship Skblanir which will have favoring breeze wherever its owner wants to go and can also be folded together like a napkin and carried in a pouch. The other is the Borgullen Bursti whose mane glows to illuminate the way for his owner. No myths involving Skblanir have come down to us but Snowry relates that Freyr rode to Baldr's funeral in a wagon pulled by Gullen Bursti. Freyr is referred to several times in skaldic poetry. In Husdrapa, partially preserved in the Prose Edda, he is said to ride a boar to Baldr's funeral. Skernismal In a poem by Egil Skallagrimsson, Freyr is called upon along with Njrr to drive Eric Bloodaxe from Norway. The same skald mentions in Aaron Jarnarkvia that his friend has been blessed by the two gods. In Nafnalur Freyr is said to ride the horse Blughfi. Freyr is mentioned in several of the poems in the Poetic Edda. The information there is largely consistent with that of the Prose Edda while each collection has some details not found in the other. Valaspa, the best known of the Eddic poems, describes the final confrontation between Freyr and Surger during Ragnarok. Some scholars have preferred a slightly different translation, in which the sun shines from the sword of the gods. The idea is that the sword which Surtr slays Freyr with is the sword of the gods which Freyr had earlier bargained away for Gare. This would add a further layer of tragedy to the myth. Sigurar Nordal argued for this view but the possibility represented by Ursula Drongki's translation above is equally possible. Grimnismal, a poem which largely consists of miscellaneous information about the gods, mentions Freyr's abode. A tooth gift was a gift given to an infant on the cutting of the first tooth. 
Since Alfheimer or Alfheimer means world of Alfar the fact that Freyr should own it is one of the indications of a connection between the Vanir and the obscure Alfar. Grim Nismal also mentions that the sons of Ivaldi made Skblanir for Freyr and that it is the best of ships. In Glinga Saga In the poem Lokasena, Loki accuses the gods of various misdeeds. He criticizes the Vanir for incest, saying that Njrr had Freyr with his sister. He also states that the gods discovered Freyr and Freya having sex together. The god Tyr speaks up in Freyr's defense. Lokasena also mentions that Freyr has servants called Bigvir and Bela. They seem to have been associated with the making of bread. Ogmandare with acute TTRDYTTS The courtship of Freyr and Gare is dealt with extensively in the poem Skernismal. Freyr is depressed after seeing Gare. Njrr and Sky ask Skernir to go and talk with him. Freyr reveals the cause of his grief and asks Skernir to go to Jotunheim or to woo Gare for him. Freyr gives Skirnir a steed and his magical sword for the journey. When Skirnir finds Gare he starts by offering her treasures if she will marry Freyr. When she declines he gets her consent by threatening her with destructive magic. Other Icelandic Sources Gusta Danorum In V. Snorri Sturluson starts his epic history of the kings of Norway with Inglinga Saga, a Yahimarized account of the Norse gods. Here Odin and the Asir are men from Asia who gain power through their prowess in war and Odin's skills. But when Odin attacks the Vanir he bites off more than he can chew and peace is negotiated after the destructive and indecisive Asir-Vanir war. Hostages are exchanged to seal the peace deal and the Vanir send Freyr and Njrr to live with the Asir. At this point the saga, like Lokasena, mentions that incest was practiced among the Vanir. A with acute er njrr var me vonum, a with acute ha fi han at a sister sina, v at at varu ar log, varu era born Freyr ok Freya. And at Varbanat me Ajam at Big Jisvanate at Frinsamai. In Glinga Saga 4, Schultz's edition. While Enjord was with the Vanaland people, he had taken his own sister in marriage, for that was allowed by their law, and their children were Frey and Freya. But among the Asaland people, it was forbidden to intermarry with such near relations. In Glinga Saga 4, Lang's translation. Odin makes Njrr and Freyr priests of sacrifices and they become influential leaders. Odin goes on to conquer the north and settles in Sweden where he rules as king, collects taxes, and maintains sacrifices. After Odin's death, Njrr takes the throne. During his rule there is peace and good harvest and the Swedes come to believe that Njrr controls these things. Eventually Njrr falls ill and dies. Freyr talk a with acute Ricky Eptir Njr, Varhan Kalar Drotten if first vi um ok talk scat Jaffer af im, han var vinsail ok arsail sem fair hans. Freyr reisti at up solem hof mekit. Ok Sudi ar hafusta sin, laj i ar til aller skulder siner, London ok lausa ora, a with acute hofst upsala or, ok hefer haldest a e san. A hans dog um hofst fra frer, a with acute var ok a r um ol London, kandus vire at frey. Var han v meir drucker en honor goen. Sem a Hans Dogum Var Lands Folket Agara and Fyraf Fryanum OK Ari. Gergemus Dotir Het Kona Hans, Sun Rira Het Fjalnir. Freyr Het and Virunafni, in Vanafn Var Lengi San Haft I Hans Eat Farir Tiner Nafn, OK in Glingar Vera San Kalair Hans Eat Men. Freyr Talk Sot, 
N E R at Anam Lay Sadan, Li to you men sir are with acute s, ok leto famen til hans coma, and jogu hog me kin, ok leto dyrra ok three gluga. N E R frere var dor, baru ir hanli niliga i hajin, ok zgus viam at han lafi, ok varvate to han r three vetr. N scat alam hil to ir i hajin, I ein glug gulanu, and I anan silfrenu, I hin reja ear pen and gum. A with acute hells a r ok frer. In Glinga Saga 12, Schultz's edition. Frey took the kingdom after Enjord, and was called Draught by the Swedes, and they paid taxes to him. He was, like his father, fortunate in friends and in good seasons. Frey built a great temple at Upsal, made it his chief seat, and gave it all his taxes, his land, and goods. Then began the Upsal domains, which have remained ever since. Then began in his days the Frode peace, and then there were good seasons, in all the land, which the Swedes ascribed to Frey, so that he was more worshipped than the other gods as the people became much richer in his days by reason of the peace and good seasons. His wife was called Gerd, daughter of Gemus, and their son was called Fjoln. Frey was called by another name, Env, and this name Env was considered long after in his race as a name of honor, so that his descendants have since been called in Glinger. Frey fell into a sickness, and as his illness took the upper hand, his men took the plan of letting few approach him. In the meantime they raised a great mound, in which they placed a door with three holes in it. Now when Frey died they bore him secretly into the mound, but told the Swedes he was alive, and they kept watch over him for three years. They brought all the taxes into the mound, and through the one hole they put in the gold, through the other the silver, and through the third the copper money that was paid. Peace and good seasons continued. In Glinga Saga 12, Lang's translation. A with acute er alir svire visu, at frere var dor, and hells ar ok frer, a with acute true ear, at svamundi vera, mean frere viere asvj, ok vildu ig brenahan, Ok Kaluya Han Viral Dargo Ok Blue to you mess till ours Ok Friar Allah Evi San. In Glinga Saga 13, Schultz's edition. When it became known to the Swedes that Frey was dead, and yet peace and good seasons continued, they believed that it must be so as long as Frey remained in Sweden, and therefore they would not burn his remains, but called him the god of this world and afterwards offered continually blood sacrifices to him, principally for peace and good seasons. In Glinga Saga 13, Lang's Translation Frere had a son named Fjallnir, who succeeds him as king and rules during the continuing period of peace and good seasons. Fjallnir's descendants are enumerated in Inglingate which describes the mythological kings of Sweden. The 14th century Icelandic Ogmandare with acute TTRDYTTS contains a tradition of how Freyr was transported in a wagon and administered by a priestess, in Sweden. Freyr's role as a fertility god needed a female counterpart in a divine couple. Great heathen sacrifices were held there at that time and for a long while Frey had been the god who was worshipped most there and so much power had been gained by Frey's statue that the devil used to speak to people out of the mouth of the idol, and a young and beautiful woman had been obtained to serve Frey. It was the faith of the local people that Frey was alive, as seemed to some extent to be the case, and they thought he would need to have a sexual relationship with his wife. Along with Frey she was to have complete control over the temple settlement and all that belonged to it. In this short story, a man named Gunnar was suspected of manslaughter and escaped to Sweden, 
where Gunnar became acquainted with this young priestess. He helped her drive Freyr's wagon with the god Effigy in it, but the god did not appreciate Gunnar and so attacked him and would have killed Gunnar if he had not promised himself to return to the Christian faith if he would make it back to Norway. When Gunnar had promised this, a demon jumped out of the god Effigy and so Freyr was nothing but a piece of wood. Gunnar destroyed the wooden idol and dressed himself as Freyr, then Gunnar, and the priestess travelled across Sweden where people were happy to see the god visiting them. After a while he made the priestess pregnant, but this was seen by the Swedes as confirmation that Freyr was truly a fertility god and not a scam. Finally, Gunnar had to flee back to Norway with his young bride and had her baptised at the court of Olaf Tryggvason. Worship of Freyr is alluded to in several Icelanders' sagas. The protagonist of Hrafnkel's saga is a priest of Freyr. He dedicates a horse to the god and kills a man for riding it, setting in motion a chain of fateful events. In Gisla saga a chieftain named Orgram Refrace Gioi is an ardent worshipper of Freyr. When he dies he is buried in a how. Var og sa hulutur in e arnunamum tigana a aldri e festi sniuden og sunan a haji orgrams og ig fraus, og gatu men s til a han mindi frais vo verer ferir blot in a han mindi ig vilja a friri a miliira. And now, too, a thing happened which seemed strange and new. No snow lodged on the south side of Thorgrim's how, nor did it freeze there. And men guessed it was because Thorgrim had been so dear to Frey for his worship's sake that the god would not suffer the frost to come between them. Hall Freer Saga, Viga Glum Saga, and Vatunstoila Saga also mention Freyr. Other Icelandic sources referring to Freyr include Eilendingabok, Landnamabok, and Hervarer Saga. Eilendingabok written around 1125, is the oldest Icelandic source to mention Freyr, including him in a genealogy of Swedish kings. Land Namabok includes a heathen oath to be sworn at an assembly where Freyr, Njrr, and the Almighty Ass are invoked. Hervarr Saga mentions a yuletide sacrifice of a boar to Freyr. The 12th century Danish Gustadanorum describes Freyr, under the name Fr, as the viceroy of the gods. Fr quoque deorum satrapa sedum haudit procol ups sepit, ube veterum litationes morum tot gentibus ac seculis usurpatum tristi infandoc piaculo mutavit. Psyquidem humani generis hostias macter agrisus fida superis libamenta per solvit. Gusta Danorum III, Ulrich's edition. There was also a viceroy of the gods, Fr, who took up residence not far from Uppsala and altered the ancient system of sacrifice practiced for centuries among many peoples to a morbid and unspeakable form of expiation. He delivered abominable offerings to the powers above by instituting the slaughter of human victims. Gusta Danorum III, Fisher's Translation That Freyr had a cult at Uppsala is well confirmed from other sources. The reference to the change in sacrificial ritual may also reflect some historical memory. There is archaeological evidence for an increase in human sacrifices in the late Viking Age though among the Norse gods human sacrifice is most often linked to Odin. Another reference to Fr and sacrifices is found earlier in the work, where the beginning of an annual blot to him is related. King Hadingus is cursed after killing a divine being and atones for his crime with a sacrifice. Psyquidem propitiandorum numinum gratia fr deo rem divinum fervus hostis facit. Quem litationes morum annuo ferierum circuitur repetitum post eris imitandum relicit. For blot sui inis vocant. Gusta Danorum I, Ulrich's edition.
In order to mollify the divinities he did indeed make a holy sacrifice of dark-colored victims to the god Fr. He repeated this mode of propitiation at an annual festival and left it to be imitated by his descendants. The Swedes call it for blot. Gusta Danorum 1, Fisher's Translation the sacrifice of dark-colored victims to Freyr has a parallel in ancient Greek religion where the Thonic fertility deities preferred dark-colored victims to white ones. In Book 9, Saxo identifies Fr as the king of Sweden. Quo tempor rex swishii Fr, interfecto norvagiensium reg si wardo. Coniugis necessariorum eis prostabulo relegatos publis constu prandas exhibit. Gusta Danorum 9, Ulrich's edition. About this time the Swedish ruler Fr, after killing Sivard, king of the Norwegians, removed the wives of Sivard's relatives to a brothel and exposed them to public prostitution. Gusta Danorum 9, Fisher's translation. The reference to public prostitution may be a memory of fertility cult practices. Such a memory may also be the source of a description in Book 6 of the Stay of Star Catharis, a follower of Odin, in Sweden. Morchuo Autumn Bamono, Star Catharis ab Athletes Bier Mensibus ob Virtutum Axitis, cum pluruma apud eos memoratu digna editus sit facinora. Suianum finds in creditor. Ubicum filius fr septenio firiatus of his tandem ad hacanum danii tyrannum se contulit, quod apud upsalam sacrificiorum tempor constitutus effeminatos corporum motus sinicosque memorum plausus ac malia nolarum crepitacula fasta dirit. Unde patet, quam remotum a lascivia animum haburit. Qui nee is quidem spectator se sustinut. Adio virtus lux we resisti. Gusta Danorum 6, Ulrich's edition. After Bamoni's death star Cathier, because of his valor, was summoned by the Byermian champions and there performed many feats worthy of the tellings. Then he entered Swedish territory where he spent seven years in a leisurely stay with the sons of Fr, after which he departed to join Haki, the lord of Denmark, for, living at Uppsala in the period of sacrifices, he had become disgusted with the womanish body movements, the clatter of actors on the stage and the soft tinkling of bells. It is obvious how far his heart was removed from frivolity if he could not even bear to watch these occasions. A manly individual is resistant to wantonness. Gusta Danorum 6, Fisher's Translation A strophe of the Anglo-Saxon rune poem records that This may refer to the origins of the worship of Ingui in the tribal areas that Tacitus mentions in his Germania as being populated by the Inguionic tribes. A later Danish chronicler lists Ingui was one of three brothers that the Danish tribes descended from. The strophe also states that then he went back over the waves, his wagon behind him which could connect Ingui to earlier conceptions of the wagon processions of Nerthus and the later Scandinavian conceptions of Freyr's wagon journeys. Ingui is mentioned also in some later Anglo-Saxon literature under varying forms of his name, such as for what doth Ingeld have to do with Christ and the variants used in Beowulf to designate the kings as leader of the friends of Ing. The compound Ingui Freya and Envy Freyr likely refer to the connection between the god and the Germanic king's role as priests during the sacrifices in the pagan period, as Freya and Freyr are titles meaning lord. The Swedish royal dynasty was known as the Inglings from their descent from Envy Freyr. This is supported by Tacitus, who wrote about the Germans, in their ancient songs, their only way of remembering or recording the past they celebrate an earth-born god Tuisco, and his son Manius, as the origin of their race, as their founders. 
To Manius they assigned three sons, from whose names, they say, the coast tribes are called Inga Evans, those of the interior, Herminones, all the rest, Ista Evans. In 1904, a Viking Age statuette identified as a depiction of Freyr was discovered on the farm Rallingen Lunda, Södermanland Parish in the province of Södermanland, Sweden. The depiction features a cross-legged seated, bearded male with an erect penis. He is wearing a pointed cap and stroking his triangular beard. The statue is 9 cm tall and is displayed at the Swedish Museum of National Antiquities. Archaeological Record A part of the Swedish Skog tapestry depicts three figures that has been interpreted as allusions to Odin, Thor, and Freyr, but also as the three Scandinavian holy kings Knut, Erik, and Olaf. The figures coincide with 11th century descriptions of statue arrangements recorded by Adam of Bremen at the temple at Uppsala and written accounts of the gods during the late Viking Age. The tapestry is originally from Halsingland, Sweden but is now housed at the Swedish Museum of National Antiquities. Small pieces of gold foil featuring engravings dating from the migration period into the early Viking Age have been discovered in various locations in Scandinavia, at one site almost 2,500. The foil pieces have been found largely on the sites of buildings, only rarely in graves. The figures are sometimes single, occasionally an animal sometimes a man and a woman with a leafy bough between them, facing or embracing one another. The human figures are almost always clothed and are sometimes depicted with their knees bent. Scholar Hilda Ellis Davidson says that it has been suggested that the figures are taking part in a dance, and that they may have been connected with weddings, as well as linked to the Vanir group of gods, representing the notion of a divine marriage such as in the poetic Edda poem Skernismal, the coming together of Ger and Freyr. A phallic Viking Age statuette believed to depict Freyr. The Skog Church tapestry portion possibly depicting Odin, Thor, and Freyr. An example of the small gold pieces of foil that may depict Ger and Freyr. Rallinge statuette Norway Sweden Skog Tapestry Denmark Netherlands Gulgubber Toponyms Notes